Greetings, so quick disclaimer about this build. The build requires you to have a certain mod. The whole build hinges on this one mod. If you do not have this mod, it's going to suck. I do have a build guide without the mod, but it sucks. So we have had Netrocells for a while now, and on the same lines, Void Cascade behaves similarly. The objective is, the main objective after running for about five minutes, is to kill enemies inside a zone. The problem is, the enemies that you are given, especially in Void Cascade, tend to stand outside the zone and shoot you from outside of it. It's the most annoying thing. With Netrocells, it's slightly a different issue when you're in public matches. People just want to just kill things, myself included. You end up just going off on a tangent, realise that you're about 100 metres away from the zone, and you need to kill things inside the zone. So, the best way that I have come up with doing these missions is to convince the enemies in a very polite way to come stand inside the zone i.e. Zephyr. Zephyr is a fantastic warframe to make everyone come together. She has two fantastic abilities that suck people in. They are fantastic abilities to crowd control and to make sure that your allies aren't just killing them outside the zone you are forcing the enemies in to speed up your missions. That is, the why, that is why I've picked Zephyr. Not only that, she has fantastic survivability and she's very fun to play. What weapons suit that playstyle best? When you are hoovering all the enemies up and you just want to destroy them all in one hit and kill them very quickly and efficiently, you use the Occucore. Well, I use the Occucore. You can use anything you bloody want. It's the whole game. Who cares? But I use the Occucore. So, the Occucore. To get the Occucore, you need to get it from the Dojo Energy Lab. So hook up with any Dojo uh, clan and go and get the blueprint. The actual building of it is not too bad. I think you need one rare fish and one rare gem from Fortuna. The rare fish is, funnily enough, one of the first ever videos I made on YouTube for Warframe. That's quite a fun little fact because I watch that video and I cringe every time. Anyway, the Occucore. It's a pistol, it's a beam weapon, and when you get kills with it, it creates tendrils, and these little tendrils tend to, um, they arc out from the reticle, and you can target multiple enemies at once. It's pretty good. The problem with the weapon, and the main problem that it has, is that initial kill. So you can see that this is taking a little while, even built for it. It's taking a little, little while, and in the moment that you get that first kill, it starts to do a lot better. You can see little tendrils arcing out from the, the gun, and they're aiming at different people. I'm not even aiming at them, and they're dying. Yeah, it's pretty strong. These are Eximus units, level 195 steel path. They are the best that I can, I can uh, test with, but I have taken this to level 5000 in the Avoid Cascade. So it's very strong. It does a lot of stuff. As I said, the main issue that it has is its initial startup. So the gimmick of the weapon is, as long as you don't reload, you get to keep those tendrils. So you can swap around, you can shoot something else, you can swing your melee, you can do backflips, and you still keep your tendrils. The problem is, if you, for whatever reason, reload at any point, you lose your tendrils. So when I spawn these enemies in, I've still got the tendrils, and I am absolutely destroying them. It's fantastic. The moment I reload, I'm back to none. And I have to start up again. That's its main issue. So, there are things that I have done to get around this issue. The first one is I am using Arcanes to buff its damage. I'm also using Energized Munitions. Energized Munitions gives me 75% ammo efficiency for about 8 or 9 seconds. There's also an Arcane called Arcane Pistolier, but I don't use that one as much purely because it's impractical. The main thing that I'm looking for is practicality. I don't like when I have to wear a green hat and I'm doing side backflips and there's a full moon and that's when I get my 50% damage. I like practical damage that I can use quickly and efficiently. I hate abilities like that. So th things like Vigorous Swap annoys me. It just It's just an annoying mod for me. I, it just frustrates me. Like, if I want to use a weapon, I want to kill with that weapon. So 
I'm looking for practical sources of damage and mods and things like that. And that's my thought process behind my builds. The Ze Zephyr build, I am using a decent amount of range so I can attract enemies in with air burst um, and tornado. I have got very good duration. Um, the best I can get with my duration, granted we, I'm trying to maximize for range and keep my efficiency somewhat leveled. So I have 100%, 170% duration and that allows me to have tornado up for a long time and my energized munitions, which I'll get onto in a second. The efficiency is 100%. I don't want to dip into that to increase my strength. So I just want decent, fast, fast moving, fast flowing abilities that don't cost me very much and I have decent range so I can attract the enemies in from a decent range. The air burst range is about 18.8 .8 meters. It's not fantastic. Obviously mag can get up to like 60 meters, but the air burst is completely fine. The problem that you have, and I'll put up a little paint on screen, is that enemies tend to stand outside the bubble. I'm not trying to pull them in from the edges of the map. I'm just trying to get them to move a little bit further forward in. So if they're standing there, I can sh bring them in. The cool thing about Airburst is it acts as a, not as a mag pull, but actually acts as a miniaturized um, Valban um, alt. So it actually lasts for a little while. So if you cast it, it's, it lingers for a little while and then it dissipates. Um, so it's pretty good in that sense. Tornadoes, again, it's the same thing. They have a large radius. They bring everything in. They suck everything in. It is essentially like a multiple moving Valban ult. It's fantastic. So I have range and duration for both my main builds here. They are very similar. They have slight differences, and that's because of the helmet ability, which I'll explain now. The helmet ability is energized munitions. I didn't want to. I just wanted a, a a build that didn't include raw or eclipse or energized munitions or gloom. I just wanted something a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun. So I chose energized munitions. Energized munitions is a fantastic ability that allows the Occupy to keep up its momentum. The Occupy is so strong that usually 90% of the time you absolutely do not need to use energized munitions on it it will sustain itself with kills with sentient surge i'll throw the mod up on screen when you kill enemies it refills 20 percent of your magazine and it allows you to keep your ten tendrils going for as long as possible the problem with that is that when you are fighting for about 30 minutes and you're in a void cascade or a natural cell mission some enemies have damage invulnerability there are some times where you're fighting an enemy and you're, you're at 10 magazine and you need like 15 just to kill that enemy. So Energized Munitions allows you to just sort of, it's like a safety net for the Occupy to allow it to keep its tendrils up at all times. So onto the build, we have Brief Respite for the um, shield gating that I'm using on Zephyr. So with that, um, obviously Brief Respite comes with Rolling Guard, they usually together. Primary Direction allows me to have better shield gating time. Um, those three mods are my survivability, which gives me a few slots for range. So I have stretch and overextended for my range. I have equilibrium because it's a fantastic mod that allows you to keep your energy up. If you don't have this one, this one you can swap for energy nexus. If you don't have arcane energize, which I'm using on the right here, this this uh, arcane is a uh, swappable one. If you don't you don't need arcane energize. You can use any arcane in this slot, but you can use um, energy nexus for your energy upkeep, prime continuity for my duration, and I have precision intensifier, new ability. I think it's very fun. On this build, as you can see, I do not need strength for energized munitions. doesn't scale with any strength. Airburst does, has damage, but I'm not using it for its damage. I'm not using turbulence, does not need any strength. It just needs duration. Um, and tornado, again, does have strength and Precision Intensify is a 90% ability strength for your fourth ability. I don't need strength for my first three abilities at all. I just need it for my fourth ability, and my fourth ability benefits from it uh, for from strength. So 40% strength plus 90% gives me my 130%. 
and that's completely fine. It just gives me, it just it just takes it over that 100%, which is what I want, and it allows that damage to scale quite nicely into the, into the tornadoes. When you shoot into a tornado, it it's main whatever main status effect that you're affecting on that tornado, tornado is then applied to the enemies, be, like currently being sucked in. So as long as it's over 100%, it's it's doing its job and it's allowing that Oki Core to get some more damage off when you need it. The arcanes for Zephyr that I'm using are Arcane Velocity, on critical hit, 9% chance, 90% chance for 120% fire rate to pistols. This is a practical arcane, you're using it all the time, you're guaranteed critting constantly with, with the Oki Core, um, so you're gaining that 120% fire rate to pistols. The caveat to that is, if you don't have a 5 star ranked one, that's fine. Just use a one a one ranked one or just use one arcane. It's completely fine. You're still it's still a practical arcane. You're still getting use out of it. As I said, Arcane Energize is a spenny arcane. You do not need it. You can use arcane precision in, in here on headshot 300 percent damage for 18 seconds on secondary weapon. You can also use Malt Augmented on kill ability strength. It's it just gives you that extra strength if you want to scale your tornadoes even higher. But as I said, you have a free slot here for this build for Zephyr. The two main Archon shards that you need are the Emerald ones. And the reason why I'm using them is to increase my stacks of corrosion to 14, which gives me my 100% armor strength. It, it is the most practical armor strip in the game. As long as you're modded for it, you can strip armor instantly with most weapons as long as they're built for status. So they are the main Archon Shards. You can skip the rest of these I have on here. They are just nice to have. So I have a Tau Forged Crimson for ability duration. You could have secondary crit chance there as well to make the Oki Core even stronger, which I don't think it needs, but there you are. I just like that extra bit of time with my Turbulence and my Tornadoes. I have Casting Speed here just for survivability sakes. You don't need it necessarily, but it is just nice to have. It makes, makes her flow a lot quicker, like her abilities to start kicking out a lot faster and I have energy max the energy max I would say is the second most important because it allows me to not have flow on the main build it just it just offsets that flow and puts it onto my archon shard so I can mod for better things the fun little mod that I have on Zephyr is the airburst rounds airburst when you for each enemy sucked in you gain 40% additive damage on your secondary weapon so it's just like having an extra Hornet Strike slapped onto the Oki Core for free. It's So instead of having Flow, I have Air Burst Rounds, which just makes my Oki Core stronger. It also allows it to get its tendrils a lot faster. When you're, when you're talking about um, a level 5000 Cascade mission and you've lost your tendrils, which can happen, you need damage to get them back again so you can keep the chains up again. I really enjoy this build, just like having to... Keep the Oki Core going for as long as a lo as long as possible. So it's a good way of doing it. Okay, onto the Oki Core build. Obviously, the elephant in the room is Sentient Surge. Sentient Surge. Each target eliminated refills 20% of Oki Core's magazine status chance and critical chance are increased by 60% for each tendril active. You are allowed four tendrils. Kills generate up to four tendrils, and they lock onto enemies near the reticle, which actually is quite a wide range. You don't have to really be aiming at much to get the tendrils to do their job. I am fortunate enough to own a Riven. The Riven is allowing me to have Corrosive on one mod and it frees up a mod slot and that enables me to have uh, an extra mod slot down here. So I am able to have Crit Chance, which I think roughly gets me into crit, crit, a Red Crit territory um, with crit, uh, crit Chance on Pistol Gambit, Sentient Surge with four tendrils and Zephyr's passive. While you're in the air, you are allowed uh, you get 150% crit chance as long as you're flying through the air. So you get around to brown kit red crit territory with this weapon, um, with this riven. So I have obviously corrosive on here. My I have secondary encumber. Secondary encumber is the best for this because you you inflict so much stats so quickly. It allows your galvanized shot to just fly through the roof and you you deal ridiculous damage you you melt level 5000 enemies it's fantastic if you don't have secondary encumber and it's expensive cascadia flare works or primary pri uh, secondary merciless on kill gain damage um, but secondary encumber is definitely the best uh, arcane the only thing that changes with this build is ruinous extension 
Ruinous Extension can be swapped for Eject Magazine. If you're in a scenario where you have five ammo left, you need to kill an enemy and it's not going to cut it, you can flick through your weapons really quickly and you can gain, you know, six or seven ammo and it will allow your Ocucore to keep its tendrils up at all times. Um, I do prefer Ruinous Extension though because Energized Musicians does tend, tend to do that job for me. Obviously, not everyone's going to have an Ocucore Riven and they're all going to do the same thing. So a no Riven build would be uh, your Bane mod. And the only thing that has changed is instead of crit chance, uh, I've taken off crit chance from the first build and on the second no Riven build, I've replaced it with a status mod, a dual stat mod to give me my corrosive back. Obviously, I'm sacrificing some crit chance here, but it's not the end of the world. As I said, Sentient Surge gives you so much crit chance anyway. And if you're flying through the air with Zephyr, you gain 150% passive crit chance anyway. Now, the Worm Prime I am using purely for survivability. The Worm Prime has Manifold Bond for cooldowns. It has Negate. Obviously, it's, it's removing status effects from me every 5 seconds, which is fantastic. I have Tenacious Bond on here, which gives me crit, crit damage. Final Crit Damage Multiplier, which is fantastic. I have Astral Bond here for the energy, uh, the amp energy efficiency on my operator. Um, so, and I also, because of the Tenacious Bond, I'm using the Volcax with Vigilante mods, which are enhancing crit, crit weapons from my primary weapons. As long as you have Crit Delay on your Volcax, you will get your Crit Multiplier down from Tenacious Bond. So the main drawbacks from this build are damage attenuation problems and armor strip on special enemy problems. So if you have, you're on a steel path cascade mission, you won't be able to armor strip a special enemy that can only get to four stacks of corrosive. So you need another form of um, armor strip. The problem is, Anaira usually does that job for you, but you're taking Majorai because you're killing um, Thrax units that need you to take Majorai so you can deal void damage with your operator. So you need another way to get through that armor. So you have two main slots here. So obviously you're using the Ocucore and Zephyr. You have a little bit of leeway and play around with your primary and secondary build. So I use the Sancti Magistar because I use it for basically everything in the game. Chattering Impact on any impact based uh, we um, melee weapon will do this job for you. You can inflict and Armor, shri armor strip any of the acolytes in Steel Path, um, any special damage attenuation uh, enemies. Um, this weapon here hits so hard that generally I can just hit them through armor, even up level thousands. You know, I can I have 12 times multiplier by this point with melee crescendo, and I can just one shot most things with it. It's a fantastic build. Um, I've gone through this before in another video, but anything works here. You can use any Zor. Um, Nincondi Prime, Venk Prime, Glaive Prime, anything. There's there's tons of weapons you can use here that, that will do this job and fit this job. I just prefer Giant Hammer. With the primary weapon, I'm using something that allows Energized Munitions to really come into its own. Obviously, all of my Arcanes are built towards secondaries, but I still have a primary weapon here. And... Obviously, the Kuva Comb is a fantastic weapon. The main drawback of it is its ammo economy sucks. It just absolutely annihilates its ammo. So what I am doing with Energized Munitions is it allows the Kuva Comb to really just to armor strip and just absolutely annihilate enemies. And I, you know, I'm still got most of my ammo. So I'm really making use of Energized Munitions here. Honorable mentions are the Tonkor you can shoot four shots before having to reload which is a fantastic little addition to the Tonkor it does a lot of damage um, another honorable mention would be the the Phantasma the Phantasma obviously has 11 shots it doesn't really have an issue because you can just reload instantly with it but it is just kind of fun to just keep shooting with one one magazine so yeah there is there's a ton of ton of uh, weapons that you can use in these primary slots or the or the melee slot their job basically is to armor strip the acolytes in steel path for void cascade and special enemies and with damage attenuation. So there's tons of things there that you can use. Sanctum Magistar is my favorite one, but as I said, there are hundreds of melee weapons that will do this job for you. So yeah, that's pretty much that build. Budget build. So the budget build is 
it's going to suck. It's not fantastic, but it will do its job. So the budget build I have for the OccuCore, these mods that I have chosen are all mods that you can obtain without minimum plat. So a rank one Cascadia Flare costs you 25 platinum off all frame market. A primary, uh, sorry, a secondary Merciless would set you back, a rank five secondary Merciless would set you back 28 plat. The problem with secondary Merciless, as with anything, it's an on kill effect. It's not practical. Cascadia Flare is damage here and now. You get 160% damage now. I want it now. I don't after the kill. The problem with the OccuCore is you have to get that initial kill to start getting your tendrils. And once you have your tendrils, you're going to start killing things very, very quickly. It's getting that first kill. It's really hard. So I think Cascadia Flare does a really good job here of ha giving you now damage as opposed to on kill damage. It's important. So the main change here is obviously... The mods here that you can obtain for free, there's no relative uh, plat platinum cost here. I think the most expensive thing on here would be the rank 10 mods and also Cascadia Flare. So I think you're looking at around like 300 plat or in game time, I don't know, about 50 hours to, to get the endo. These these mods you'll have anyway, you'll work towards them naturally so that, you know, I've put them in. Tainted Clip, magazine capacity, it gives me 96 magazine um, with the Jack magazine that enables me to when you shoot and you swap weapons you re i think you reload like 10 10 ammo at a time so that that's instead of energized munitions being there for you what you do instead is obviously you you gain you know i've shot most of my occupy core now the problem is i need ammo but i don't want to reload so you just scroll scroll your mouse wheel and there you go i'm back into a 96 i haven't reloaded and i keep my tendrils it's impractical but it, it does the job i have a zephyr budget build here as well it's the same thing. The only things I've changed out are obviously no prime continuity, just normal continuity. Um, I've kept my airburst rounds because airburst rounds, it gives you, again, as I said, it gives you that free additive damage for your OccuCore. Um, I've left some rank one arcanes in here or like just, just singular arcanes. As I said, these are practical now damage arcanes. It's only 20% fire rate, but it is pretty much guaranteed to proc, and your arcane precision on headshot, guaranteed to proc, 50% damage. It's just giving you that extra damage. These arcanes to buy, I think, are about 5 plat each. I think arcane velocity is going for 11 plat, so if you're struggling for plat, if you have 11 plat, it's worth just to pick up arcane velocity rank 1. It's, it, is, it is worth it, because it's now damage. It's, it's, um, it's instant damage. Energy Nexus, obviously, you get from the new... Sanctum Anatomica and Handspring as opposed to um, Prime Short Footed. Obviously, Prime Short Footed is a very expensive mod. Uh, not everyone has it. So, Handspring is a fantastic mod just to put in here as a placeholder. Um, it's not bad. Equilibrium again, doing its job. Normal redirection. You're not, you're not as I said, you're not going to get the min max out of it, but it, it will do its job. So, I will show you what it does to a normal corrupted heavy gunner. So, I'm armor stripped and I'm putting my heat up so now I'm running out of ammo so I'm going to start scrolling my mouse wheel to get my ammo back and now I have a tendril and that will just think it will just give me more spread damage as you can see I'm running out of ammo so just give it a nice scroll back and there you go I'm back to 100 or 96 and it does you know it's it's fair that it's fair damage it's doing it's doing a good job it's definitely doing a good job it's not it's not as good as uh, as what it could be with obviously min max stuff but for a budget build that probably costs you less than 100 plat it's not bad it's doing a job it's definitely doing a job obviously air burst is going to give me more secondary damage so yeah that's pretty much uh, the build and what we're going for if you like this build and you want to see more, I will probably do some more when the feeling takes me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, found it instructive. Um, if you've felt inspired to make your own build, let me know in the comments.